so shift control 4 beautiful and also shift control and 5 hello everyone and welcome welcome to another episode of homeowning tv in this video i will tell you about a very handy tool called Better Touch Tool for macOS. Better Touch Tool is a very rich customization program where you can customize your touch bar or modify shortcuts or create macros to give certain actions to certain keys and much, much more. The option that we're going to explore today lets us create macros for uh, shortcuts and command prompts in Dorico, which can definitely increase your workflow speed and also make certain tasks more convenient. Before we get into BTT or Better Touch Tool, let's see what a macro is. A keyboard macro is a recordable shortcut that allows you to perform tasks by combining multiple keystrokes at the same time or after each other with a delayed action. In short, it's a way to combine multiple actions into one shortcut. In our case, the example that I'm going to make for you guys is a keyboard macro that automatically creates a quintuplet for us in Dorico. And of course, you can customize Better Touch Tool with the same procedure with any shortcut or program you want on your Mac OS. Now, if you want to add a quintuplet in Dorico, the procedure is to first select a note, second, hit the semicolon button to open up the command prompt for tuplets, third, is to write down our desired tuplet. In our case, typing down five against four E, which the E stands for eight notes. Then the fourth and the final step is to hit enter and voila, there is your quintuplet. And our goal for this video is to automate this whole procedure. So in the future, you can make tuplets faster. All right, so after you downloaded and installed BTT, open it by going to the icon on the top bar of your Mac. So here, and then click on configuration. Now let's do an overview of BTT's window and its different panels. When you open a better touch tool, you might not see some of them, but uh, um, don't worry, once you start creating commands, they will automatically open. So for example, you're gonna see this, but if I show you uh, what it was uh, that I did in Dorico, you're gonna see a lot of uh, more panels right here, which I'm gonna focus on this right now. The left panel is the destination for your new shortcuts and macros that you make with BTT. So, any program or software that is receiving the information will be shown here. The middle one has two sections. One is where your top level triggers are and the other one is where you assign shortcuts and commands to these triggers. To clarify, the top level trigger is the physical shortcut that you press on your keyboard and the commands connected to that shortcut are the ones that will be added in the window next to it. So they will be here. The last panel on the right has details of each command and it's for customizing each action. And finally, the top drop down menu lets you select the devices that these shortcuts will be used from. Um, sounds complicated, but uh, trust me, by the end of this video, you will get the hang of it. And also, uh, when I said about the shortcuts, it's I mean that Better Touch Tool allows you to use many different inputs. So you can also use your Siri remote or uh, your magic mouse or anything. So you can create shortcuts for any of these devices. But we're gonna now focus on keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm gonna remove my Dorico here. So this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna look like this when you open your BTT for the first time. So we want to make shortcuts for Dorico. Now I'm gonna add Dorico here, select app from file system. And then we go to Dorico here yeah, and click on open. Once you click on open, then you have this plus button right here and it says add first keyboard shortcut for Dorico 5 or well, any version of the Dorico. Now two important things. 
First is that I added the Oracle here in the apps since I only want these shortcuts and macros that I make to work in Dorico. And they are only active when Dorico is open and on top. Second thing is that make sure to use shortcuts that don't do anything else, neither your Mac nor Dorico. Otherwise, it's going to make things quite complicated and uh, mixed. So you don't want one uh, trigger to trigger multiple things at the same time. All right, so I want to have the shortcut Control Shift 5 as my top level trigger to initiate a set of commands. Then I will click on the plus button to add my first top level trigger. Upon pressing it, there is a prompt to enter my desired shortcut for my top level trigger. I will press Control Shift 5 simultaneously now. And you can see it's added here. Next step is to assign commands and shortcuts to our Control Shift 5 shortcut. So I will highlight it by clicking on it. It's already highlighted. Then I will hit the plus button to add uh, new commands that are initiated by this trigger. So then click on the plus button. And since we want this macro to start with opening the toplet popover in Dorico, I will press the semicolon key on my keyboard being the default toplet popover shortcut in Dorico. So, whoop, actually press this one here, whoa. Oh, actually good that this stuff happens so you know how to delete it. So it's the wrong thing. I'm just gonna press on the recycle bin. Then I'll press plus again. It says click to record shortcut. Now I'm gonna press the semicolon key on my keyboard. All right. Then I will click on the plus button again to add the next command. And this time you want to scroll down to texts. You see the text actions here and insert type paste custom text. And the box that is over here, the mini window text box, I'm going to write five against four E. And this is going to be the text that is going to be written in the Dorico popover. And next up, I'm going to add another one and that will be the button again. It's going to be a shortcut. Enter. Because I want the toplet popover to be initiated with the semicolon button. And then I want it to be, uh, I wanted the text to be added and then enter. But if I initiate now, but if I, if I, for example, press control shift five now, this is not going to work. And the reason is that we need to have a little bit of a delay between each action. So we're going to really replicate what's going to happen in real life if we do it ourselves. And to add a delay, I will add, I'll press the plus button here. Oops. Uh, and then you can also just write delay here. It makes it easier. Delay. And search for delay next action async not blocking. I'm going to click on it. And there's a tiny window here for the details. I'm going to write 0 0.3 seconds. Okay. So I will then grab this to go on top. And what this means is that once I press the semicolon button, there will be a delay of 0 0.3 seconds. And then it will paste this text. And I want another delay after this. So easily I can just do command C, command V, and then there will be another delay after the text is written and then also the enter button. Okay, so now let me show you how you can duplicate it. So to make m more of these, because I'm pretty sure you're not gonna need, uh, you're not gonna be needing one of these. So you just click on the top level trigger and then, well, you can do Command C, Command V, and then easily just go here. If you're making another toplet, for example, you can put it uh, three, three against um, four, and E. So it's going to be again, again against uh, eight notes, and 
that's it. But one final thing before we give, give it a try is that if, you, if you're going to make things complicated here and if you're going to add a lot of stuff, which is fine, then in order to make it less complicated, um, you can select each of, the, of these triggers and give it a name here. So there's a note section here. So I'm going to write uh, quintuplet, Oop. right? And this one I'm going to write because this one was a three against four. So I'm going to write triplet. And as you can see right here is the, the, the text is written. And oh, and also one final thing to do before I forget. Since I made another top level trigger, I want it to be triggered by another control. So this one was control shift five. And this one will be, uh, I'm going to select it here. It's going to be control shift and uh, let's say four. Okay, now let's try it in Dorico. So shift control four, beautiful. And also shift control and five. Very nice. There you have it everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And also don't forget that if you are using uh, Better Touch Tool, Better Touch Tool needs to be open all the time and in the background, so there should be uh, this icon right here, otherwise it's not going to work. And uh, it has a trial version for 45 days and if you want to support the developer, you can buy it. Link will be in the description below. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And as usual, if you have any requests or questions, please leave them in the comment section. Until later, Humayun out.